G'day guys, uh, Adam Kogan here in the SSW Chapel in Sydney. We have a live audience, small live audience, coronavirus times, but we also have a audience in the SSW office in Melbourne and in Brisbane. So hello to everyone up there and down there and uh, lots of people online. Now tonight we have um, Matthew Wicks who will be talking about uh, all things to do with development productivity. And uh, before that, we are going to do our normal news. There's always lots of news every month. And uh, I have put together a little bit of news. But after the news, you are going to be seeing this session here. And this is the session that you'll see with uh, Matthew Wicks, is just down there. In fact, Matthew, I might ask you to come up and you can join the news if you like. So, uh, uh, you can comment on anything you think is cool or uncool. So, um, Matt, your talk tonight, what's yep. it going to be about? I'm uh, going to be talking about um, setting up an ultimate dev machine. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've gone through the hassle of reformatting my computer one too many times. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, I automated a lot of it um, and tried to make the experience as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought, hey, if I'm going to do that, how would that... I apply the same concept to, um, you know, day-to-day -day work. All right. So, and so is this tools Visual use. Studio, VS Code? Yep. Is there more? Um, yeah. There's more. All right. Don't we'll worry. find out. Spoiler alert. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Great. And lots of cool extensions? Uh, a few. Okay. So here's some news. The first news is Microsoft Build is coming up. This is Microsoft's event. I'm very sad about this news because I have been going to Microsoft Build since the beginning. Uh, for uh, about 20 years, and I've loved them. In fact, more than 20 years when I come to think of it. And um, it was a great place to go, hang out, party, go to all the, the great parties and uh, meet people, talk code, see great sessions, see the future. Uh, now, uh, by the way, it used to be a serious investment. It cost thousands to fly there. Um, and uh, it would cost... Lots of money for the conference. It cost lots of money for the parties and the, the uh, alcohol and other things and food. Everything in America is expensive, used to be. And uh, now it's free. It's all online. So there you go. And uh, of course, the first thing that you'd want to do is come to the sessions and look for all the cool sessions. If you want, well, the, the, you, you can see straight away there's good sessions, but I guess if you want the best sessions, you might type uh, Guthrie or Hanselman or whatever, uh, here, oh look, even better, you get Guthrie and Hanson all together. And uh, we at SSW are holding uh, a, uh, a watch-in, so people are coming here on that day, I think it's next Thursday, you can have a look, but we're going Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and Newcastle, and you can um, come and watch it together. There'll be um, lots of great food, and we can all uh, talk about whether it's good or bad. Okay, and, and the speakers won't hear anything about it. So, um, uh, what, looking forward to anything particular? Uh, I think um, all the Visual Studio announcements. Um, right. They even dropped a, a little item into the Visual Studio installer uh, feed there. Right. So, um, interesting to see what's happening with that. Yeah. So, you'll learn all about VS 2022, all right? Um, so, you won't need to go to Matt, Matt's session, no. So uh, it will be, <laughs> be redundant in two years' time. And, uh, and then uh, they'll talk about .NET 6. Yep. And one thing that was slightly weird that was absent is you didn't see much about cognitive services. So I don't know if something's coming or it hasn't, uh, or they've got, they're going to announce that stuff slightly later. Um, but yeah, there isn't much on cognitive services, which is a surprise because we know they're doing lots of work on that. So anyway. Um, you haven't commented about the tab preview. The tab preview. Oh, yeah. Actually, I just thought that was your you machine. Have, yeah. So I've, I've gone into, this is Edge. I've actually gone into the, the flags. So I, I've tweaked it and I've turned on um, previews. That is awesome because I have so many tabs. I yeah. can't even um, read a word. So. Yeah. Ah, finally. Great. All right. That is excellent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the next thing is there's lots, there's a big Windows update uh, coming. So this Windows update has some nice things 
apparently it's all about performance, so it's going to be faster. Uh, are you telling me you've already installed it? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> all right, Matt, you don't need to listen to my news. <laughs> um, now one of the big features in this is that it supports Windows Hello from multiple cameras. So um, there's, there's many scenarios. The most popular scenario is somebody at home has a great big monitor and a nice keyboard and they put their laptop there, they close it, and now Windows Hello doesn't work and now it will work um, with the new Windows uh, 10. All right. So, uh, I don't know if there's any, yeah, good. That's that news. Next news. Okay. Azure Static Web Apps. They are now G8. That is now released to manufacturing. Now um, done. Cooked, baked, delivered. So uh, that's great. Uh, we have been using this a lot. Uh, and I could uh, do a little plug here while I'm uh, here. And if you were to go to SSW Rules, this is all uh, static site. Um, let me just come here. And of course, it will be fast, etc because it's all static. Static is awesome. Um, and of course, we have some dynamic stuff. You can log in and do other stuff. But uh, this is all running. Um, Matt was one of the architects on this, and this was um, Gatsby, React. And you could build your own Angular site, and it's all going to be static. Um, now, there's going to be different... Um, times that it's going to be appropriate and not appropriate. So in this case, you've got you know many thousands of pages. Um, when Gatsby generates, it, you're really generating a static site and there's some web resources, some web API calls. But on other sites, you're going to choose static sites potentially in the wrong way. You're going to make a, you're going to use a static, a, you're going to, have something like Gatsby or another one, and you're only going to have a few pages and almost everything is a database call. And in that case, you're going to question is that the, because you're going to lose flexibility, right? Yeah, there's, there's pros and cons to both mm -hmm. approaches. So, um, I mean, you choose the right one that fits uh, the application. So mm -hmm. when you've got predominantly static content, then yeah, static site is great. Um, if you're changing it frequently and you expect to see the updates straight away, mm -hmm. hey, you really want to, want to, shift what you're doing. Um, you can still use a static site, but you, you may want to change some things around. Now, one of the reasons people love static sites, other than they're fast, it's very cheap. And uh, it also seems to be positioned in, in a perfect marriage with um, Azure Functions. So if, um, if that's the way you're going to build your, your architecture, yeah. uh, it's a good way, unless you, your Azure Functions cost starts getting expensive when you should have chosen web apps. The Troy, Troy did a talk about that, so um, there's, there's ways to game Azure Functions as well. Yes. So uh, you can always get the, the best of both worlds. I like the static site, um, the Azure Static Web Apps. Um, I mean, it's everything serverless. It's, it's awesome. So if no one's using it, I'm not paying a lot to, to keep it running, keep the lights on. So. Oh. Awesome. Okay, so let's move on to the next piece of news. The next piece of news, and I am going to show this. Do you know this? The news is, that is what we had. That is the Microsoft Azure function. Uh, sorry, the most Microsoft Azure logo. That's what it, that's what it was. And uh, this is if you're focused on just looking at that. You're not going to believe this. Looking at that and then looking at that was the first time. This is the new one. That, that's the first time that I actually realized that that was meant to be an A. <laughs> kind of looks like a D. I didn't make the connection. That is shocking. And nobody told me. Okay. So uh, anyway, I didn't miss it here. So that's pretty clear. Uh, it's, pretty, it's also like if you log into the portal, it changes the fav icon. All oh, right. Yes, yeah, so they've, they've rolled it out. It's pretty cool. Do you know that I thought that the soft edges uh, had gone away? I thought, you know, we're all into hard edges. That, no, visual, the Visual Studio icons mm -hmm. have that soft edge. So. Right, okay. Anyway, uh, do you like it? Yeah. Thumbs up or thumbs down? It's a logo. Ah. Oh, one. All right, mostly thumbs up, all right? So that's good. All right, next piece of news. 
Blazor Day. Now, Blazor is uh, used on a number of our projects at the moment, and uh, the guys love it. This is very developer friendly. Um, uh, who said in the company once you do once you go Blazor, you won't go back? Is it Will? Will or JK? One yeah. of them. They're all saying it now. They all copied each other. <laughs> um, yes, but this is a one day free conference. It's run by some um, Belgium guys. Um, and uh, you can have a look at the last one there. So uh, it's, a, it's a long day. Um, it's in fact, uh, there's the short part, five hours. Um, yeah, it's a long day, but if you're into Blazor, uh, that's a great thing. And uh, all our guys love Blazor. Um, so next piece of news. Oh, this is awesome. The Cosmos emulator for Linux is here. It now works on uh, Mac OS. So we have a couple of rogue SSW developers. Uh, I won't mention them. Um, but anyway, Anthony in Melbourne uh, has got a M1 and he's uh, been trying to talk all the other guys into buying uh, those. And he has to burn through his Azure credits working on Cosmos. Now he won't have to. So um, that, so now that's good news for a whole bunch of them. Tom, Brady, et cetera, that are going, going Mac all the way. So, all right, next piece of news, Microsoft Teams. Now, you know how your, your mum and your, you know, your grandma might have Microsoft Skype installed? Well, they don't need that anymore. They can install this thing, it is, just Microsoft Teams, but you just log in with your, your normal Microsoft account. It's not for um, business use. It has all the nice stuff here. Um, it has, it does not have the Teams tab. So in Teams, it doesn't Teams. Uh, Can you still share screen and remote control other people's computers? Because I think that's the... Uh, it, you, you That's better the be able feature, to. Yeah. You better Especially be able with, with to. Especially with non-technical family. I'd be shocked if you don't because you had it on Skype. Uh, now, I think the question I'd like to know if anyone knows, do you, can you install this if you already have Skype installed, if you already have Teams installed? Like, yeah. So you, you have both? Yeah, well, I'll show you. Oh, you, don't tell me you've installed both. <laughs> no, 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 you don't install it because I've already got Teams. So um, I've got... Yeah, drag this over? Yeah, so I've got Teams here. If I go to the profile, um, I can see accounts and orgs and add personal account. So I can add it in and it's just another Right, so you're not going it. to install it? No, no. Okay, but I'm once already... you log into that, as per that image... It's just a, you're as only... if I log into a different Teams tenant. Right, okay. So. But but the UI, will it change like this? Activity, chat, I and calendar? I haven't done yeah, it, but, but that's... So that, that was the question why I wondered if you can run both. But anyway, um, anyway, so that is that. So that is good news from the Teams team. Do they do a lot of work, those guys? All right. <clears throat> Next piece of news is for the Power Platform. Now, this is big news. The Power Platform, look at this. Now, you know how uh, Gardner have their quadrant, Forrester have their wave. And if you look at this, Microsoft, you know, this is essentially Power Apps and Power Automate. It is now one of the leaders. It's right up there without systems. This is a big move, and this is all about how well that Power Apps has done. Kind of looks like it's just it's the strongest strategy. Yeah, and uh, I'm surprised because Salesforce was the big guy, hmm. and it's dropped dropped down. So that's uh, really surprising. Yeah, and I guess it wouldn't take much to do a search on Power Apps. It's all Power Apps these days. But you can, how much yellow do we have? Heaps. Uh, yeah, they love Power Apps. Are awesome. All right, and uh, I. I have started to n notice, and I might just pop something out. SSW rules, awesome documentation. Documentation. Um, one of the things that, you know, we don't do paper docs, of course. We don't do these type of things. You do nice documents, but, you know, you have readmes and, you know, instructions on how to F5, et cetera. You have instructions on your technologies and architecture. but there is a, a real strong argument now to mention the alternative solutions that have been considered. And, you know, you can build an Angular app or something, but you should have a good reason why you haven't gone 
you know, a low code solution these days. Um, you know, some types of e examples of, you know, that you've considered that. So, yeah, I just think that's uh, going to be more and more important because there's going to be more and more cases where a low code solution is applicable to a lot of solutions we've developed over the last 20 years. All right, next piece of news. Next piece of news is Elon Musk. Uh, he caused some uh, dramas. He went on Saturday Night Live uh, and the Bitcoin price plummeted during the show. And uh, that, was, uh, that was quite funny, even though he was just making jokes on there. Uh, they took that serious. Uh, anything Elon Musk does is kind of serious these days, isn't it? Now, well, they, Tesla used to accept Bitcoin as a payment method, and they stopped doing that. They did? Yeah. Yes. And uh, I have a little bit of news on that as well. So, oh, no, I won't come to that. Uh, I'll come to that. I'll come to that because I do want to mention that China also said we are banning uh, Bitcoin and, you know, those uh, type of uh, cryptocurrency in China because they're going to make their own version, right? Now, uh, it dropped 5%. Uh, so Bitcoin has been taking a bit of a hammering. Um, I think I think that's... Um, well, I, I think that's probably bigger than 5% when you think about it. Mm. Uh, you know, losing China is a big, big one. Um, but I am, I'm impressed that a, a company, because you know companies always focus on shareholder value. They're always about, um, we will make decisions so our shareholders get the best return. Um, in Elon Musk, I've, I've been uncomfortable with that because you really should be doing things not just for shareholder value, but it should be in the best interest of anyone that interacts with your company um, uh, or anyone that's affected by your company as well. That's how you shouldn't be allowed to pollute you know, the river if mm -hmm. you've got a big factory and not have that taken into account. And if all you're looking at is at one value, you've got a problem. Elon Musk had an interesting situation where he has built a company and he wants to, you know, reduce carbon emissions. And then, then he, he has this payment system and the carbon emissions are going skyrocketing. So uh, he had to make that call because he wouldn't be... Uh, it's not in line with the company. Yeah, yeah. yeah, clearly. So that is, he's not, he's obviously, by doing this, he's not looking after shareholder value, but he's keeping true to his, um, you know, to the company ethos, I guess. So I thought that was great. Anyway, next one. I love this one. Now, I, um, I blogged about this, but I went to a doctor and uh, I had a, um, uh, a thing on my back and the doctor, the skin doctor said, uh, oh, that should be all right. And there was an intern in there. I said, oh, what's that thing? Um, and uh, the doctor said, oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. And, um, and then I heard it and I said, oh, no, doctor, you know, nick it off. I don't want it if it's, uh, if it's questionable, thanks. Um, and, uh, so he said, oh, all right, I'll do that. I already, I already saw it, but it doesn't matter. And, uh, then it came back like a day later. Oh, that's malignant. Uh, quickly come in. And, uh, that was funny because, uh, I knew something was up because that was the doctor. If you rescheduled an appointment, he pushed it out three months and all of a sudden he's available at, uh, 7am tomorrow morning. So I thought, oh, something's up. So anyway, he cut out a big part and it was, uh, skin cancer. Um, now, have a look at this. Skin cancer is a big thing in Australia. You can take a photo of any spot you see and it will tell you what it is. Now, they apparently they cater for 120 skin conditions. Um, so that's the end of dermatologists. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, um, I'd still like the doctor. <laughs> he's still like the doctor. No, if you've got an app, you don't need the doctor. No, the app does it. Right. What, what if what if <laughs> what if the sample's skewed? <laughs> All right. Okay. So now onto other Google news. This is apparently big news, uh, and this is we're going to find this out tomorrow because the uh, Google I/O is just about to happen. Um, but they are going to tell you there's going to be Android 12. And I uh, know if you're an iOS person, you're not going to care about this. But this. Oh, and uh, Google. It already came out that Google and Samsung are partnering up for um, their wearable strategy. 
Oh, nice. To try and get more uh, apps running on, on Tizen, which runs .NET Core. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> I will have space for one more. OK. So um, let's have a look at this. Uh, there is, they say it's their, their biggest update, and there's a lot of uh, changes to do with privacy. So there'll be all the warnings for the tracking of the ads. The UI has changed a lot, and yeah. So uh, there you go. You can. I don't know if I'll. Shall I put you through that? Forty-five seconds. Let's have a quick look. It looks pretty. Oh, good. Lots of curves. Curves are back everywhere. All right. And uh, they didn't. Yeah, they went away. Okay. It looks very retro. I think the the animations uh, they've done something with that too, so you can buy into more of the animations. Okay, will it be so friendly that my wife will be able to put the phone on silent in a meeting? I don't know. So um, there's the privacy stuff and uh, other features. All right. Next piece of news. All right. Now, this is interesting, and I will, will... So the New Zealand Spy Agency assisting um, this uh, hospital, I believe, uh, got, got attacked. Now, I happen to know a little bit about this because um, uh, my beautiful daughter did this great story. She's... Here we go. Now, this story... And it's, uh, she's, <laughs> she, she interviews uh, Troy Hunt here. Where is this? It's loading. She'll have to do something about the performance she needs here. Static okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is um, a fascinating story. You, you, if you wanted to uh, read about it, um, uh, essentially, uh, a a uh, a company, uh, a hospital in Finland had a whole lot of uh, counselling services and stuff, and all their data was stolen. And then they ransomed all the people that were in the database of the of the counselling practices, and et cetera. And so these people, you know, are telling counsellors and, and therapists their you know, marriage problems or all their problems um, and said, hey, pay a few thousand dollars and I won't release all your conversations. So it's a difficult situation, right? There's a whole lot of, uh, you know, uh, it was, uh, it's quite the story. And um, what is this? There were kids you... And then, yeah, so, and this was happening. This, these were the stories that, and that, you know, were 10 years old and stuff, and it's pretty bad. And so here we go. And so basically those guys uh, were talking about that, and here we have a similar type of story. Um, it is bad. These hospitals uh, are being attacked. All right. So next piece of news I have is, this is a bit of fun. Um, you can now apparently harvest the Wi-Fi signals that aren't being used and charge things. Is that cool? No? How are they not used? Well, apparently they, they can pick up the ones that are, are being used and the ones that aren't being used. So, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's all pretty cool. So, um, there was one other thing I wanted to tell you, and I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, goodness, what was it? I think I covered all these. So I'll just finish off by saying um, the COVID situation in India has been really bad. Um, and uh, the Australian government uh, was, they even shut down uh, flights from India, even Aussies trying to get back. Um, and then I was talking to Jacob from NDC last night uh, and apparently there's starting to be a correlation of um, Pakistanis in in Norway who are dying at a higher rate than other Norwegians. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there's some talk of whether the virus in India is, is super stronger and that there's some um, condition that they're more susceptible to a higher fatality rate. So it's, uh, and then uh, the, then there was Griffith University in Queensland that announced 
uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, that they had a therapy that was 99% effective. So once you got it and you were sick, uh, they could um, make you uh, well again. Uh, the problem is it's going to take two years to release it. So there's that coronavirus news. And I know that affects a lot more, a lot more people than Aussies, uh, or it doesn't really affect uh, us at the moment because we don't, ha we haven't had any cases for about 50 days, I think, um, in the in the wild. No, we? there, there were cases a couple where of weeks were? ago. Oh, and where were, where was that? Barbecue Matt. Oh, that's right. I forgot about him. <laughs> yes, tell the story. I, but that's the thing. We, we don't know how he got it. So. Well, we know how many barbecue rest, how many barbecue well, he's places looking he looking at buying, buying a barbecue chain. Yes. So. Oh, he's looking for a chain? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought he was looking for a barbecue and he went to yeah. 20 different yeah. places. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. I thought so he was he's looking at buying at a, a chain that's <laughs> struggling. Yes, that's that's, that's the scary bit. Yes, yeah. that's the scary bit. He just turned up with it. No one's had coronavirus forever, and then he just turns up with it and hasn't, um, as far as we know, hadn't come across anyone. So anyway, that's the news.